Well, the last time we saw you, the Mariners were 1-0 and feeling pretty good. Now they're 1-3 and and the fan base is losing its mind. We're going to be addressing some of your concerns and questions on today's episode of Locked On Mariners. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Monday, April 3rd, 2023. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Patton for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N in the game. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon by scanning the QR code right above my head. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description below as well. It is Mailbag Monday, the show where we answer your Mariners questions, and this one should be pretty interesting coming off a disappointing series loss to the Guardians. Colby, let's just get right into these. The first one comes from Max, who says everybody is focusing on the negatives. You got that one right. I'd like to hear your positives of the last three games. Probably nothing in the shutout, but the other two games, I mean, there there are some things from the shutout. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, Colby, I'll, I'll let you start here. I think it's interesting that you're starting us off on a positive note and then we're going to get progressively more pessimistic throughout the episode instead yeah. of like leaving this one as a palate cleanser or a mm. happy ending. No, you're just going to No, we're going to give the we're going to give the people what they want, Colby. Miserable. Yeah, we're going to give the people what they really want, Colby. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> everybody wants to be the victim, so that's what we're going to give them. Okay. Uh that's interesting. So, uh positives from this week? Um you know, Julio has three straight two hit games. Uh, he looks pretty good. Uh, Ty France got off to a really good start. Uh, so that's, that's good to see. Uh, Cal Raleigh sitting the ball hard. Um, the starting pitching aside from, well, I mean, I shouldn't say aside from the starting pitchers that you thought were going to be good aside from Robbie Ray pitched really well, uh, against a quality lineup. Um, you know, and, and, I know there were some people who didn't think so, but I thought the bullpen looked fine. I thought the bullpen looked pretty good considering, um, you know, some of the difficult circumstances they were put in and how many innings they actually had to cover this weekend. Uh, I thought they looked fine. So I, I really don't think that was an issue. Um, yeah, I think there were quite a few positives. I, I think, you know, I, honestly, some of the best at-bats we saw this weekend actually came from Colton Wong, who I think only had one hit in the series. Mm. But he was hitting the ball hard. He was just hitting it right at guys. He was working counts. He wasn't chasing. So, um, yeah, I, I actually think there are quite a few positives. Cal, uh, you know, hitting the ball hard still. A. Eugenio just missed a couple home runs. Um, he looks pretty, pretty much like he did last year. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I would say the the big positives from this from this weekend are Logan Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullpen I think was actually pretty good uh, considering the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would say Julio. Uh, France and, and Cal, um, you know, just looking really, really comfortable at the plate and looking like they're going to pick up right where they left off. Yeah, Logan Gilbert was the big positive for me this whole weekend, and that was the one that came from the shutout loss. So mm-hmm. that's why I was kind of surprised to see you, Max, say that, uh, you know, anything but the uh, the shutout there in your, in your question. Um, Gilbert was awesome, man. I mean, he showed us pretty much everything you would want to see from him. Colby, I know you were sitting out in, uh, what, center field? I think you were in the, the J-Rod squad, right? Yep. Nice. Uh, so you you didn't have a, a great chance to, to see Gilbert throughout the that game. I know you watched a little bit of it back, but uh, we actually saw him get value out of his secondaries pretty consistently mm-hmm. throughout the start as well. The the curve uh, was getting swings and misses, and so was the splitter. the The new splitter was real, and it, and it worked for him. He uh, induced several swings and misses, including a couple against Jose Ramirez, which was very impressive. Um, he had, he posted a thirty six percent called strike plus whiff rate which i think was fifth most on opening week amongst all starters major league baseball against uh the probably the premier contact oriented lineup in all of baseball right um yeah uh and 
the nice thing about that too was is that he really didn't have his good fastball for most of the night. A lot of 93, 94s. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet he was still able to really dominate, just made, you know, the one mistake. Uh so yeah, Gilbert looked great. Uh, you know, Luis Castillo looked great on opening night. I again I think the bullpen was fine. I think the guys that you need to be good, I think they were pretty good. I know Brash gave up a run, but it's a bloop double that kind of lands between two guys and then they just move them around the bases. It's, it's unfortunate he couldn't get the big strikeout he needed, but you know, yeah. that happens. I thought Seawald looked really good this weekend. I thought Munoz Agreed. looked he looked better in his second outing than he did his first. Uh Trevor Gott's come out and been pretty solid out of the pen. Um, dude, Gabe Spire. Yeah, Gabe Spire on, you know, back to back. Yeah, back to back to back. back. Yeah, yeah. Cause he he came up for the third game because of Robbie's injury, in which we're gonna be talking right. about here and in a second. But yeah. I didn't I didn't see Sp- well, I saw Spire pitch, but it was, you know, from my vantage point. I can't tell how he looked. Looked like he gave us some hard contact, but it, I know it was, you know, one, two, three, and then this last time out, he did his job, you know. Mm. He got uh, he got the outset he needed to get. Unfortunately, Cal with a rare throwing error um mm-hmm. kind of you know cost them that game and and it's a bummer but that's a play cal's gonna make 99 times out of 100 so uh yeah overall i think the bullpen was pretty good and and uh you know two of the four starters were pretty good and you know most of your stars were actually pretty good at the plate so i think there's actually quite a few positives from this weekend it just the times you needed those big hits you just didn't get them right right but yeah overall um yeah, the the big thing for me was Gilbert. That was uh, that was really nice to see. So looking forward to his next start here against. Uh, is he going to be pitching against Anaheim or is it Cleveland again? Cleveland again. Yeah, it's going to be Cleveland again in Cleveland. All yep. right. So next question here comes from Doug. Uh, with Ray Hurt and Marco going on paternity leave soon, do we see Bryce Miller brought up this month, or do the Mariners make a trade for another starting pitcher? I think you have two options here, and neither involve the options that you uh, mentioned here. Uh, I think it's either going to be someone like Tommy Malone gets a spot start or bullpen day straight up. And mm-hmm. yeah, cause I just, you, you don't want to, you don't want to rush Miller. We got a lot of questions about like, does this speed up Miller's timeline? Right. All that. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, you can't be that reactionary uh, no. because he still needs the, the time that you thought he needed, you know, a week mm-hmm. ago, Robbie Ray's injury doesn't change that at all. Yeah. I would also say Miller didn't really force your hand. This, I mean, he had a decent spring. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But he really wasn't so spectacular that you just feel like he's absolutely ready. To yeah, be he in got the big rocked leagues. in his last start against yeah, San Francisco. So, yeah. I mean, control was a little iffy. The breaking stuff wasn't great. That that does happen sometimes in Arizona, but you still want to see it a little yeah. bit in the minors. Um, yeah, they do go spot start. If they don't want to do a bullpen day this early in the year, I mean, fine. But they're probably going to uh, Brennan Bernardino, who's starting in Tacoma now. Uh, they're probably going to go to Easton McGee. Um, you know, they're going to go to somebody who's already on their 40 man. True. Uh, you know, they, they could go Taylor Dollard if they wanted to take that shot, but mm-hmm. I still think it's a little early for him. Very so I same, think it's a very similar situation to Bryce Miller there. Yeah. I just, I think Dollard's a little more equipped to sure. get through a lineup twice right now, at least based on what we've seen. Uh, Miller can easily change that in like two or three starts down to triple a, but mm-hmm you're not going to get two or three starts before it's time to make this decision. So, um, yeah, I think honestly the move is they probably call up Bernardino and just kind of do a, an opener slash bullpen day. Uh, and then I think plan B would probably be Easton McGee, but also keep in mind, they do have an off day. They have right. an off, they're off every Thursday for the rest of the month, mm-hmm. or I think every Thursday for the rest of the month. So they can pretty easily, you know, work around this, um, and keep everybody else in rotation. Uh, so yeah, I don't think they're they're not going to make a trade. And honestly, there's just not a, a starting pitcher out there that's worth going to get that's yeah. available on April 3rd. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that that I, I think your options are pretty limited. I think it's going to end up being a bullpen day if I just had to project. And, yeah. and that's just how they're going to roll with it. And it's probably going to be a Brennan Bernardino or a Issa McGee, maybe a Tommy Malone. We'll see. Yeah. Um, one quick note, just going back to the first question on um, about Gilbert. Um, or what I was saying about Gilbert, you mentioned the velo dip. 
I don't think that's really anything to be concerned about. I think that's just more of an early season thing. It was also kind of windy. So I don't, I don't think that's really anything to be uh, too, too worried about. All right. So we got more questions here in just a moment, but real quick, a reminder this episode of locked on Mariners is brought to you by ultimate baseball GM ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise. Well, your dream can come true. And this game is definitely for you manage every strategic aspect of your team play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, managing team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency, and all the ups and downs of a season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go, as you want, and when you want. It's basically the Jerry DePoto simulator. So instead of saying chills, DePoto did it again. You can now say chills. I did it again. Download it now and Locked On Mariners listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate Baseball GM, start your dynasty today. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen here on Mailbag Monday. And before we get back into these questions, Colby, status report on our fundraiser. Yeah, so uh, we entered the weekend at about $3,500 on our uh, fundraiser with Feeding America. Um, if you guys you know, weren't aware, you didn't listen last week. Um, you know, feeding, We've partnered with Feeding America. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser with them. Uh, they're an organization that helps, you know, feed the hungry. And, and right now there are 34 million people who live in America who face food insecurity. Nine million of them are children. Um, and what Feeding America does is provide, you know, healthy, uh, nutritious meals to those who need them. Um, it's a really good bank for the buck type of uh, charity. Every dollar that is raised, um, Feeding America is able to generate 10 meals out of that $1 uh, so it really is, uh, it really is an awesome charity. And there are a couple ways you guys can get involved. You can scan the QR code right there. Um, and it'll take you to our donation page. There's also a link to our donation page in every, uh, YouTube video and every podcast description. Um, we had somebody reach out via email last night who wanted to know how they can get involved, but they weren't on YouTube and all that stuff. So I just sent them the the link to donate if they wanted to, and I could do that for you guys too. So don't be afraid to reach out via email if you're having trouble or anything Locked like on that. Mariners at gmail.com, by the way. Yes. Yep. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Also, you know, if you can't donate or you've already donated and you want to help out more, uh, Ty and I are also donating 10 cents for every new subscriber we get in the month of April. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, you know, and by the at- way, we should make that clear that it's for YouTube only subscribers on YouTube only. Uh, we had someone that asked about, uh, subscribing on one of their podcast platforms. We have no way of tracking that. Uh, right. so, so yeah, we wouldn't be able to, to yeah. know. So it's, it's, a, it's only a bummer, YouTube. but yeah. that's the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys just subscribe to the YouTube channel, it's 10 cents. It's a meal essentially is what you're donating. Uh, and if you've done all that and, and you still want to help out more, you could, you could donate again, or you could just simply share these posts and share the tweets and share these episodes and just, um, let people know what we're doing. It's, it's been really cool. We're up to 3,500. You only got one donation all weekend. Um, so you guys kind of took the weekend off, which is fine. Mm. Cause so did the Mariners. So everybody mm. deserves a weekend off every now and then, but let's get back to it. Remember if we get to $10,000 uh, raised, Ty is getting a tattoo. Um, he's agreed to do that. Mm. And I still have a chance, I think, to talk him into the buff Kirby, but we'll see what he decides to do, but we got to get to 10 K. So, uh, yeah, it just, you're going to you have know, to talk to my wife, Caroline about that. <laughs> scan the QR code, right? Um, go to the, the link in the description, share, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, just get this out there and let, let's see how high we can get this thing. we got another month to go. Yep. Um, and $3,500 again, thank you guys so much. It's blown away our expectations already. Um, uh, but now we're kind of enter the part where we're like, let's how see how far, far can we, we can push this. this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So <laughs> help out if you can guys, it would greatly be appreciated. Also just quick side note. Uh, we are doing a giveaway. Uh, originally planned, uh, I was going to give away this Cal Raleigh autograph card, uh, to somebody who is subscribed to the channel and leaves a comment on any of the videos this month. 
that was going to happen anyways, but obviously you guys blew the, uh, the charity thing out of the water. So I'm also going to throw in to another random listener, this cool autographed Mike Cameron card. And if you guys keep on donating, I'll probably have to give away more of my stuff. Uh, the way you enter those is, is pretty simple. Just make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, leave a comment on any video we post for this month. Um, and you'll have a chance to win. So that's what we're doing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, please, uh, please do consider, uh, donating to feeding America. Uh, cause right now, you know, 3,550 some dollars talking about 35,000 meals, uh, yeah. that have been donated, uh, which is awesome. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's get back into these questions here. Colby, uh, Ben asks, uh, how big is losing Robbie Ray going to affect the beginning of our season? So this gives us an opportunity to talk about Ray's injury, a grade one flexor strain, which of course is the least troublesome of the flexor strains, but it's still it's over. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's definitely over for your Cy Young pick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, sorry. I mean, sorry about that, pal. My uh, my bold prediction, Cy Young. Your pick. bold prediction, Cy Young pick. Have to make that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, have to make that distinction. Okay, so yeah, so Robbie, I mean, the the control was all over the place on Friday night. Uh, dude just could not find the strike zone consistently. The velocity ticked down pretty significantly as the night went along. Some of that, I just, I don't, for, for me, I didn't really think, like, it never crossed my mind, oh, he's probably hurt. I just thought he didn't have it, and it was just kind of a weird early season thing for him. But once you told me, I got off the plane in Toronto and I found out. And once you told me, I was like, oh, okay, that makes so much sense. So especially uh, since the velocity started 94, 95, 96 yeah. in the first. Yeah. And then the second, it was 92, 93. And then by the third and fourth, it was 90. It's pretty clear at that point that something wasn't 100%. I did see him kind of start flexing his wrist like this mm. after a few pitches. But, you know, it's tough to know what pitchers if, if that means something's wrong or not but yeah it uh <laughs> it definitely did dampen the spirits after the awesome opening night win and and it's just a real bummer man because even robbie ray at his worst is still a dependable number four mm-hmm. like because that's he, that he is dependable he's always taking the ball every fifth day he always gives you five six seven innings um, and he just posts and, and I think this might be the first time he's, he's hit the IL in his career. Um, but he's, even if it's not, he's been remarkably, uh, reliable and, you know, he's probably the guy I felt best about getting through the entire season healthy and then start one. There it goes. It hurts. I mean, there, there's really no denying it. There people trying to like, like marginalize the loss. It's stupid because if, if you, I'll just say, if you think Chris Flexen is better than Robbie Ray, you're dumb. <laughs> you're being stupid. There, there it is. There's the line. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it really sucks. I mean, this is the, like, of, of all the negatives from this weekend, this is the biggest one. This is the one that actually is tangible, that actually might yeah. have a long-term impact on, on the Mariners, that actually, you know, says something about the long-term future for the Mariners in 2023. Um it's 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 rough because like you said i mean this guy has consistently been one of the greatest innings eaters in professional baseball over the last you know few years and um now that's that's gone right you know because again like no matter how you feel about robbie ray like you mentioned at his worst he's still a number four he's still better than marco gonzalez and, and chris flexen which, right. which is really but, what's the what's the ultimate point here is that this is a significant downgrade for the mariners however long this takes and you know they're going to shut robbie down for two weeks he's not going to do anything and then they're going to reevaluate where he is after that point and we'll see again this is a grade one flex flexor strain which is better than a grade two or a grade three of course uh, so there is a chance that maybe this isn't a long-term thing for him. Maybe he only misses a month, but the history ha- says that it's going to be kind of a long thing for him to rebound from, but we'll see. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a huge bummer and it is a significant loss and it takes the Mariners from having arguably the best rotation in the American league to kind of throwing them down into, it's still a good rotation, uh, but it's, it's nowhere near what it was Uh it's certainly not one that you can say is is the best in the American League. Uh, you can't make that mm-hmm. argument with Robbie Ray on the shelf. 
no still has three guys who can potentially be elite pitchers but right yeah. but it also now has two guys who are number at fives. best number fives yeah yeah so that's yeah those things mm, don't really it's balance one yeah it's uh it's really rough it really sucks mm-hmm. and uh i feel i feel for robbie because uh, it seemed like he finally got his stuff yep. together here uh going into the season and hopefully he's able to bounce back here and uh, get back out on the mound and uh, get back to where he was in spring so next question here comes from seattle sports how many more starts of marco do we have to see if he continues to perform like this it's truly frustrating well with the injury to robbie ray I think you're gonna have to a see lot. quite a few more starts out of Marco Gonzalez until yeah. You know, here's the thing though, I kind of feel like if Robbie, if Robbie's injury is more long term, if he's going to miss considerable amount of time, maybe this does open the door for Emerson Han- Hancock to eventually get some innings down the line. Not right away, not within the next month or so, but may like if Robbie's gonna miss like half the season, maybe we actually do get a chance to see Emerson Hancock, but overall though yeah you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of marco i'm sorry to say but yeah yeah um yeah it's gonna be at least i would say it's at least another two months i'd be pretty surprised if marco was out of the rotation by june Mm. um or by you know i think i think the earliest i could see it is very late may early june um and he'll be taken out for bryce miller if miller is healthy i think that's kind of the plan and then um, at this stage, I, what you might be Marco might be battling for if Robbie does miss, you know, beyond that much time is, is he going to stay in the rotation when Miller comes up or is, is flexing the guy who's going to, who's going to get bounced to the bullpen. And, and the answer so far has been flexing always, uh, could that change if, if Marco continues to struggle and flexing continues to look pretty good? It could. Yeah, it certainly could. But for now, I, I think you're going to see at least, I'd, I'd be pretty shocked if it wasn't at least six seven starts out of marco before they seriously consider making a change yeah agreed and again that's all i think that's really going to be dependent on whenever robbie gets back because i yeah. mean who you know if bryce miller comes up within the next month or so is it a guarantee that he replaces marco or is it more likely that he ends up replacing flexing in the rotation yeah and there's all obviously the possibility of you know knock on wood another injury happening uh within the rotation as well here yeah. so i mean Luis castillo misses about a month every year so mm. yeah so hopefully not hopefully he he breaks that trend like robbie ray broke his trend <laughs> yeah i don't want to talk about it anymore yeah yeah let's 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 move past this all right so we got a few more questions to go over here in just a moment but real quick a reminder this episode of locked on mariners is brought to you by the best protein bar ever built bar the built march madness bracket is here and we know you have a favorite bar or puff so now's your time to make it count go to builtmarchmadness.com to vote for your favorites and when you vote for your favorite bar or puff you will be automatically entered into a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built not only that but one locked on fan will win a 12 month subscription to built to have built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to their door you got to try built built the best protein bar ever seriously they're so amazing you won't think they're good for you and what makes built bars and puffs so good well for starters they are all high in protein low in sugar and covered in 100 percent real chocolate that's right real chocolate run to builtmarchmadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there you can vote every day in march so hop in and support your pick or you can also make your vote in april of course we are in April, after all. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. It is Mailbag Monday. Let's get back into these final few questions here, Colby, starting with Keto O'Rourke. We're four games in. Nothing means anything yet, but what's the biggest pleasant surprise so far? So this kind of goes hand in hand with the Nothing. It's positives. all terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I would say Gabe Spire. I've I've liked what I've seen out of Gabe Spire the last couple of days. I I think he's looked pretty good. He looks like he actually might be a dude. Um, Logan Gilbert having you know uh, secondaries that he can actually rely upon. Who knows if that's actually a thing that he can can consistently maintain? But we'll see. We'll put that to the test here in a few days. Uh, but those those two things are really what jumps to mind. 
I stand by my statement. Nothing. All it's right. all been awful. Yeah. You're, you're, uh, really, no, how about, you're, really, you're really leaning into being a true yeah. Mariners fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm relatable. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's the first time you could ever say that. Uh, I just replace I'm affable. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if it qualifies as a surprise, but it certainly is nice to see Ty France kind of look like first half Ty France from last year. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty big, but yeah, honestly there, I didn't notice a lot of surprises. I think pretty much everybody pleasant surprises, at least I think everybody pretty much looked like you thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I could say Tay Oscar made a couple nice plays out in right field this yeah. weekend. Listen, so, I, I get everyone's been hounding him about the ball that hit off with Zanino. That's not really that's kind of fluky. Fault. Yeah, that's yeah. fluky. He's actually been really good out in the outfield, which is a nice running catch in the gap. He made a nice running catch down the foul line. Like, throw a guy out already yeah um, all off season i talked about like hey you're getting potentially another julio offensively but defensively ew, like it, it's gonna be a little he's gonna better be a little than weird. yeah but like it's been the complete opposite of that <laughs> so far so yeah. yeah i mean like i don't say he's julio at the, in the field either but he's made a couple nice plays no, no, so i think that's yeah. I, I would say Julio's defense, or sorry um teo's defense mm-hmm. has been a pleasant surprise so far yeah. we'll We'll see if it continues. I have my yeah. doubts, but hey, so JP has so been good. pretty good in the field as well. Like, <laughs> I don't want to talk about JP today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, but overall, like, watching JP try to hit. Yeah, he's made some nice plays though. That's short. That's been, I guess. Yeah, I know the defense has uh, not been particularly great cool, <laughs> you know, the last few days. So, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, there's look, I'm I'm searching for some positives here. I'm just trying to not be so down. I told down. you Sorry. it's over. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, burn yeah. it all down. Trade Julio. Get him on a winning team. <laughs> like it's there's done. D- it's obviously Julio-ver. it's not. There is no turning this around. We should just trade Julio. We sure, seriously should. If after four games there we're throwing in the white flag on this season, we should trade Julio. There are definitely people that are taking you seriously right now, and that I makes know. me sad. They're furious in the comments. That makes me really sad. By the it way, it makes me happy. All right. Well. uh Oh, okay. I thought this one was going to be the defense question. I guess that's the next one. All right. Dennis here asks, uh, even though it's only been four games, should we be worried about Teo's performance so far as we were expecting a lot more than what has happened? Well, yeah, it hasn't been great, but I'm also not concerned. This is not time to be concerned. We're not concerned trolling about Teoscar Hernandez after four games. Okay. It's trade him. It's been four games. Guys have bad series all the time. This nope. is just this is only being magnified because it's opening week. That's it. That's trade the only him for reason. whatever you can get. It's time to burn this thing to the ground. Uh, no, it's you shouldn't worry about Teo. I think obviously there's some lingering Jesse Winker effect here, and I get it because there's no. I literally I've had people in my comments on Twitter yeah, be same. like, "Yeah, is I this just, another Jesse Winker? This is Jesse Winker. <sighs> it's it's twelve at bats." I mean, first of uh, all, he's been significantly more valuable in the field than Jesse Wink <laughs> ever right. was for the Mariners. So he's got Look, that working for him, at least. I mean, but here, like, just real fast, quick aside to that. Uh-huh. Like, if Teo is Jesse Winker, so the Mariners should stop going after these guys. What you're literally saying is the Mariners should stop getting guys who are good hitters. <laughs> like, yeah. don't even try to get good hitters because they'll come here and they'll suck. So why waste the resources on it? Yeah, because hindsight is always twenty twenty. but yeah, at the so time like, they acquired just, him, <laughs> like Jesse so Winker like, was like a top 10 hitter in baseball. Just a top the 10 squad. pure hitter in baseball. Yeah. yeah. Tail at the time they acquired him, probably a top 25, 30 pure hitter yeah. in all of baseball. And since Winker was bad for most of last year, and because Tails had a bad 12 at bats, I guess they should just stop trying to get good hitters, which means you probably shouldn't complain about them not getting like Xander or something because he's a good hitter. Which one is it, guys? Because I, I, I guess Xander would also be Jesse Winker if he struggled in the first four games yeah, of the I season. I guess, I guess. And the, but Xander's hey, at least actually they spent had a money good start, on him, by the way. But yeah, yeah I know. I mean, but you get the idea. At least yeah. they spent money on him. They wouldn't have just traded for a guy. Anyways, not to belittle the question because it's actually a fair question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, nope. You're not going to see me really start to be concerned about Teo until the middle of May, and and his at bats did, believe it or not, get progressively a little bit better yeah, every day. No. And then they culminated in the big double he hit last night. And you can see what's there. He's going to strike out. That's going to be part of his game. Mm -hmm. He's going to strike out. Um, His bat honestly kind of profiles somewhat similar to a Eugenio, just a little more on base or a little more batting average skills Mm -hmm. um, than than Gino has. So, but also, I I don't think that he was tagged out 
on his steal attempt yesterday. I, I don't oh, know. I, I, I was, was it yesterday? It was Saturday, right? I don't remember. He walked. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe it was but, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell. It didn't look like he hit him, like he got his helmet at all. Yeah, but... Dave Sims was like, sure that he got like yeah, his I helmet moved. That. I didn't see that at all. Yeah, so. but your helmet might move because you went into a late slide and, you know, gravity. Yeah. <laughs> momentum, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I think Teo looked a little bit better every day uh, at the plate. And, and I, I just, again, maybe I get burned on this like I did with Winker, but when a guy has a track record as long as Teo does, I'm not going to just give up on that after 12 games or 12 at bats. And honestly, only a dumb team would. And the Mariners aren't a dumb team. And let's be honest about it, too. Teoscar Hernandez has a longer track record than Jesse Winker did, too. So there's more. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, bet. For sure. It's it's roughly the same, I would say. Mm. But okay. I mean, it's it's, it's a bit longer. It's a bit longer. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they're the same age, though, actually, now that I think about it. It feels weird (laughs) because Jesse looked like he was 45 years old last year. Yeah, that's right. But he's off to a decent start in Milwaukee. He had a bad opening day, and then he he finished the weekend pretty strong. So I'm I'm still rooting for Jesse. Yeah, Yeah, I don't have any hard feelings for Jesse. No, it just wasn't a clubhouse fit. But Teo, I think, is going to be just fine. Yeah, no, Teo's going to, you know, at least I I believe that Teo's going to be fine. I know that I've I've jinxed him, and I'm not going to make any more. (laughs) By the way, guys, we're not making any more predictions on here. We're not. We're retiring. That's the end. end. I warned you. I warned you when you wanted to do the pick to click thing. I was like, this didn't work out last year. And sure enough, like, you didn't pick Uh, Robbie as your pick to click, but you did pick him as your bold prediction Cy Young winner. So you jinx Robbie. I jinx Teo. And I'm sorry, we're not doing this I anymore. I didn't realize we were 12 year old girls. No offense to the 12 year old girls who listen to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you. And show your parents the QR code so they can scan and donate to Feeding America or subscribe but, to the Control the Zone podcast. Yeah. yeah, I don't believe in horoscopes and I don't believe in witchcraft. So I don't believe, ain't no such thing as curses or whatever Coach Gaines says in Friday Night Live. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, to, to get back to the question though, it's been four games. Guys have yeah. bad series all the time. Julio's going to have a bad series. It's going to happen. This is only mm-hmm. being magnified by the fact that it's opening week, and that's it. Teo yeah. could go next three nights or next three days uh, against the Angels and go like five for 12, and none of this will matter. <laughs> you know? Or he's going to go like eight for 12, and nobody will come to us and be like, is he an MVP candidate? <laughs> just it, it's because right. it's the first four games right yeah yeah that's yeah. really all it is that's all it is all right a couple more questions here what who or what do you attribute uh, attribute the i'm going to assume you meant laps and defense to uh i think it's just you know team had Scott a case Service of the yips should be uh, fired oh okay there we go all right yeah yeah you're <laughs> still on, doing, you're still, doing, doing? you're still doing that bit yeah you know uh, honestly it's not you think that's ridiculous? It's not. If you look at Twitter, it's really not. Oh, no, no. Twitter is, is but, in a rough spot right now. Reddit, yeah. it, I think, is in a rough spot. I, I, I was looking on there a little bit. Yeah, it's... Yeah. So who who do you attribute the laps in defense to? The players. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Players made mistakes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think it's just a case of, you know, again, you're going to have a bad series like this sometimes. You're going to have a bad defensive game like you did on, what was it, Saturday? Friday, Saturday, what, which one was the bad defensive game? I Friday. can't remember now. All of Friday. these games have blended together for me. Uh, yeah, like Friday, most Mariners losses do. Awful and yeah, it wasn't even, it wasn't just even the physical errors. There was mental errors. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chris Flex and not covering third base on the ground ball, the AU Henio. The, yeah. Just like, guys, come on. Like at yeah. that point, they'd clearly given up on the night. Um, yeah. But uh, like, I think at the end of the day, like, uh, you know, Looking at yesterday's game, I thought they actually played pretty well defensively. They just had the bad, like Raleigh had the bad throw to first, and that obviously gets magnified quite a lot. Everything else doesn't matter. Yeah, everything else doesn't matter. Mistake. But I thought they actually played a pretty good game uh, yesterday it was, defensively. Like, it was relatively clean. I mean, you take away. Gino made some good plays. JP had a couple of good plays. Like, yeah, Marco, yeah. you know, he threw the the mistake to, to Zanino, like the one pitch Zanino can hit, and he threw it to him like three times. Yeah. But, you know whatever so uh, yeah by the I way i don't think they played I, I don't terribly. think marco was that bad yesterday he he made the big mistake to to zanino and the the rest I, of it was just marco being i marco. just think that's marco yeah he's gonna give go six innings give up four runs that's what he's gonna do yeah he's gonna six and he if he gives up the three run home run he's probably gonna give up four or five if he doesn't he's probably gonna give up three you and know, of course it was mike zanino that haunted the mariners of this weekend was. of course of course it was i mean to be fair 
like the one type of pitcher that Mike Zeno should be able to hit consistently Marco, with his swing. Yeah. He is a Marco Gonzalez type because yeah. he had no chance against uh against who was it? Uh uh Castillo and then really anybody in the Mariners poll. He was not good on Friday night either. So yeah. Uh but whatever. It happens. At the end of the day, defensive mistakes, they're always on the players. They're yeah. not on coaches because yeah. the players have to field the ground ball. They have to catch it. They have to throw it. It's on yeah. them. Yeah, you're going to have bad series like this where it's just team-wide. Team-wide, you got the yips yep. a little bit defensively, and that's just, you know, you just got to get through it. Again, all of this stuff is just being magnified by the fact that it's opening week. If this happened yeah. on a random, you know, weekend in the middle of May or June, no one bats an eye. It's just like, all right, that was that was rough. That sucked. Let's move on, you know. And again, yeah. we're, we're on to Anaheim here. So that's going to do it for our show. We had a couple technical issues that hopefully we're able to cover in post-production. So hopefully you don't know when those happen. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patton, I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mirrors. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, the C-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at C-Bet 11. That's C-B-A-T-1-1. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well at Lockdown Mariners. That's one word, Lockdown Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Just like us, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And with that, have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.